fascinating fight coming up. Absolutely. April the 27th. Yep. Josh Taylor goes over old ground with Jack Catterall. Yep. You've just both been in, in the studio with both yep. of the guys. What did you make of both of them in there? You know, what did you make of their personas and, and the way they both were, their body language? Well, I think it's very similar to the description that was said about the Carl Froch george Groves fight when the first bell went. There's two guys in that room that both think they're going to win this fight. Um, I think there's a difference in their dispositions from the first fight. Uh, I think Josh is adopting a more cool and assured um, outlook. Uh, first time around, I think he was very disdainful and contemptuous and felt that um, um, Jack was beneath him. I don't think he thinks that anymore. I, think, I still think he thinks he's a better fighter, and so he should because that's mm. where his mindset is. I think Jack is slightly different um, from the from the first fight where he was uh, taking a back seat, much calmer, much more, okay, you can say what you want, Josh, you don't have any respect for me, you don't think I'm at this level, yeah, fine. He's not that way now. There's a bit more edge to Jack, mm. and I don't know whether that's contrived, whether it's what he thinks he should do, or whether it's because he feels a sense of irritation about some of the things that Josh Taylor has said after the fight and the first fight. Um, but what I think it does do is it makes a fascinating backdrop mm. to what will be a compelling fight. And you and yeah. I have discussed this. I don't think yeah. the challenge for me is I think that levels, I think Jack Cattrall's performance on the night was a really, really good performance, a slick, polished performance. I think Jamie Moore set him up really well. Mm. He was very difficult to hit and he seemed to hit Josh at will. This time around, he doesn't have that surprise element. You and I have spoken about Josh and his recent performances, but you've just sat here on your own with him for yeah. 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. What do you think? Well, it's interesting, actually, because I expected Josh Taylor to be more uptight, yeah. thought more aggressive than he has been. He's a very um, relaxed approach. You know, he's he's sort of... You could sense there was a little bit of um, acceptance in his, in, his, in his mannerisms, really. With you, listen, you're all up. You're, you're all entitled to your own opinions because he knows that 99.9% .9 of the people believe that yep. um, Catchall won that fight. I think he's sort of accepted that a little bit, and he says, "Listen, that's that's in the past. Let's put that behind us. Let's move on." I've accepted the fight at 140 because I think that a lot of ego plays a part of that as well. If he goes in, at, and I think you asked the guys on on air, if he goes in at 142, 143 at a catch weight. He's not going to get the respect that he deserves because they'll say, well, you've done that to suit yourself. So he's gone. He's going over old ground. I think that's a problem for him as well because I do believe that if you look at his last performances, you know, moving not just the Tiafimo Lopez one, the performance that he had before that as against well. Against Jack. Against, yeah, against Jack. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you've got to go back to 2021 probably when he beat Carlos Ramirez. Yeah. Uh, Carlos Jose Ramirez. You look at that performance, you go, that was, that was Taylor at his best. And I think that since then, that's 2021, you know, he's a 33-year-old man. And I think he may have outgrown the weight. And I think that that showed in those performances. You know, you can talk about how good Lopez is and how good he is. But if you look at Lopez mm. and his performances uh, after the Taylor fight and mm. before that, I've against been lackluster. Yeah. 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 yeah, he only looked good against Taylor. So does that mm. suggest something very, very interesting? Jack Catchell, you know, I think that he's sort of irritated that the fact that he never got that undisputed. Mm -hmm. You know, he wants to right the wrongs. And I think that, you know, you can see that he... Like he is more aggressive in his approach, I think is probably a better way of putting it than he was in the first yeah. fight. Because I think in the first fight he was just appreciating that he yeah. was getting that opportunity. That worries me a little bit for Jack, because it feels again. I don't want to keep making these comparisons. By the way, I think they've gone early on this stadium thing. I think they could have gone to a bigger stadium. Thirteen thousand fans is a is a is, is a significant crowd, but I think this would have yeah. filled twenty twenty five thousand. Easily. It is what it is. But going back to my point, um, in the first Groves uh, Froch fight, and it's an analysis that I think is a fair one mm. because of the nature of where Froch was at that time against where Groves was, mm. what the expectation was of that particular fight, and what the outcomes were. Albeit, you know, there was there was a debate about whether Howard Foster should have stopped the fight. Yeah. George was beginning to get broken down a little bit by mm. Carl, and that wasn't happening to Jack in the fight with Josh. Um, I'm worried that Jack is in a certain mindset because I saw that gear change in George. Yeah. George went into the first fight, winding Carl up, getting under his skin, irritating him, um, and generally being um, a bit of a smart ass with Carl and being disrespectful towards him. Mm. In the second fight, George arrives in on a bus and it all seems to be have a different direction. The expectation levels have changed. And I want Jack to be in the same mindset that he was in the first fight 
because the first fight, it, it, I, yeah. I, irrespective of what Josh says, and I got the scorecards wrong. It wasn't 117, 112. It's 114, 111 yeah, yeah. with Ian John Lewis. Even that, I felt, was, was oh, poor it's, scoring. It's terrible right? scoring. But, you know, there is no doubt in my mind and most sensible people's minds that it's difficult. Everybody, even 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 the, 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 the commentators at the time, you know, Adam was very vociferous about yeah. this was going, this belt was coming back to Chorley. Um, so it's an interesting one that there's a, there's a change in dispositions. I did like the way the boys were. They yeah. were calm. You know, there's a, there's a place for people calling one another slags and God knows whatever else yeah. they were calling one another yesterday. And Sam Jones gets involved in all that. Yeah, of course. But they were grown up in this interview. And it's an interesting in, in, insight into both the boys. Listen, it's, it, that's all pantomime. And we know that's the build-up and part of the build-up to the fight. I think there is genuine dislike. Hate is yeah. a strong word. Genuine dislike between these two. I think two there's respect. Of, there. I do think they respect there is, one another. There is respect. And yeah. I wanted to ask you, Simon, on, on air there as well, you know, about um, Jack Catchell. And he, he, and he looked at Josh Taylor and he said to him, I'm going to retire you. Yeah. You lose this fight and I'm going to retire you. What do you make into that? I mean, if he does beat uh, Josh Taylor again, do we see Josh Taylor in the ring again? Do you think? Do you think Josh Taylor's got what it takes to become a world champion again? I mean, what did you read into that? Well, again, it goes down to the question that you've uh, uh, you sort of put out there, which is the weight. Jo if Josh were to lose this fight, and given the fact that I think it's a pick and fight, there's a distinct possibility that will be the case. Then he'll always have the backstop that really 140 is not the weight class for him anymore. I've got to go to 147. The fact that he's made a big um, stance on fighting at 140 for his own reasons. He said, I don't care what other people think of me being able to get down to weight. I know what my body can and can't do and I'm comfortable at this weight class. Because I asked him, like you said. Do you think that gives him an option, by the way, that if he does, like, because he's taking this at 140 and I initially thought, what's a stupid move? Because mm. I believe he's outgrown the weight and I go like, listen, I was tight at the weight so I understand what that last two pounds can do and yeah. losing a weight and I'm looking at his performance I'm saying there was sluggish. Well, that pounds like not stone, the isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, two pounds is like two person. stones. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So you look at that and I go, he's outgrown the weight but do you think this is a genius move by Josh Taylor by saying, I want it at 140 because if he does get beat, it's a, a natural thing to say, well, I'm outgrown that weight. Well, it's, inter it's interesting now. because when the question was asked of both of them about the fear of loss, I've understood in speaking to various fighters and world-level fighters like Carl Froch or like Johnny Nelson, mm. the fear of losing is a reality and it spurs you on to make sure that you don't lose. Sure. So they both denied the existence of any fear. And I think it would be an interesting one to see if Josh is pricing into his thinking. If Josh were think, pricing into his thinking that if I lose at this weight class, I can go up to 147, I've always got that backstop, then he'll lose this fight. Yeah. Because if he's pricing that in, he's going in with a wrong approach. Surely he's going in with a wrong approach. If you're giving yourself a backstop, you know, the only I've always believed in life, the only safety net you've got is your own ass. And if you start giving yourself options, you start to put yourself in a situation where maybe you're not as focused on the job in hand as you should be. Yeah. He needs to win this fight. Because if he loses this fight against Jack Catchell, I don't really see that, that that's a positive thing for him. He's lost to Tiafimo Lopez. He was lackluster in that. He'll, he puts down some of the uh, performance against Jack based upon the pressure that he put himself under and the expectation yeah. of the homecoming and not being there for three or four years and coming back after COVID and all of that sort of stuff. I think it's a challenge. If you go three performances in a row, yeah. one you got away with, and then two, you lose. Mm. I think you're in a damaged goods territory. Who, who, who do you feel gets more damaged out of a loss coming out of this? Do you Josh. think that Josh Taylor? Josh. Do you think this is sort of like career threatening for him losing at this because he's not going to want to compete at any other level after he's been undisputed champion? You know, and you look at the career that he's had and going on the road, mm. not really getting the recognition that he should have re should have received at, at that time. A loss for him right now would potentially be career ending wouldn't it because at that level well, it anyway. depends upon the loss isn't it I mean I think I think the loss is more challenging for Josh because of the body of work and the position that he's been in yeah. Jack's trying to get to the position Jack was put into that ring and most people in the first fight didn't give Jack much of a chance besides those that are around him right and everyone thought it was levels and we all said it this is levels yeah. and the levels will show and and yet he's not he wasn't outclassed in fact if anything he outclassed Josh Taylor in that yeah. fight which was surprising so he's never been at the top table whereas Josh Taylor has so if Josh Taylor gets knocked off the top table now and gets knocked off it permanently without having a world title belt without really being somebody of any significance because his last two fights have been lost mm. then I think it's more damaging for Josh I think Jack can come again but it depends if it's if if, if one of them gets knocked out and it's a heavy knockout yeah. who knows what's going to happen in sure. this fight I mean do you do you think we'll see the final bell in this fight. I do. I believe we see the final bell. Yep, one hundred percent. I think we see the final bell. 
Um, I was going to ask you that question, but I'll answer it and then ask you it. Mm. I think that you ask me now who wins this fight and I go for Jack Catchell. And the reason I, I go for Jack Catchell is because the reasons that we talked about yeah. this morning and the reasons we have been talking about, that I think the weight was the major factor. We've done a show before and I said, if the fight lands at 147, I go with Taylor. If the fight lands at 140, I go with Catchell. Catchell, by the way, I, I interviewed him earlier and he said, I didn't want 140. I said to him, you have the catch weight. I was happy to do that. He said it was his decision, Josh Taylor's decision to do 140. I think that's Josh Taylor's undoing, by the way. And mm. I think for that reason, that reason only, I think it's going to be a closer, a much closer fight. And I think it goes down to the wire, but I lean towards Catchall. I think he'll, I think he'll run away a points victor. What do you, what, how do you, how do you see it? Who do you see? I, I think you go Look, the other way, right? Uh, slightly, yeah. I mean, I, 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 I register the concerns and the sort of grey area of the Tiafimo Lopez performance, because I would have suggested that this was a trend of, again, the Fox Groves analysis, which is basically the first fight, Groves, uh, Foch doesn't prepare himself properly, second fight, cleans out George. Right? Mm. And I would suggest that maybe Josh Taylor, back to his level, after the first fight against Catrell, but in between that, he's lost to Lopez. So it provides a conundrum for me, which is, is he done at this weight class? Is Josh all in on this weight class? And is he making a fool's errand by taking at this level? I nearly got an e cigarette out there. I'd t- disappear into <laughs> Gareth A. Gareth Davis, Davis, Davis. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do no that. one wants to be that. Um, but I... I've just got a feeling that Josh might just have enough. Um, I don't see someone getting knocked out mm. because I don't see Josh Taylor getting knocked out. Sure. I don't think Jack's got the power to knock him out. I know he knocked him down, yeah. but he knocked him down in the eighth and Josh came stronger after that. Yeah, he did. Right? He so, did. And, and Josh will bite down on the gum shield. And the one thing you cannot say about Josh Taylor, besides the fact before the Catrell fight, we're all talking about him as a pound for pound, Absolutely. Right? is that Josh Taylor doesn't bite down mm. on the gum shield and got the bollocks to go in deep when it gets deep. Um, and I don't think Jack gets knocked out. So I think you're right, it's a points decision. Mm. My gut feel is is Josh Taylor. But I'll be happy to be wrong because I think both of them are at it and on it in this fight. And I think we're going to see a proper, proper, proper fight. That's the beauty about this fight is I think we're all going to have an opinion and none of us are going to know until that yeah. first bell goes. April the 27th, Leeds, the direct arena mm. is when we're going to find out. And it's a fascinating fight, Simon, totally. because like you say, it's like one of those, it's a yeah. flip of a coin. And um, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. And both of them, whoever wins, you're going to be happy to put your hat on them yeah. because they both are, you know, strong young men, capable young men, young men that deserve the best opportunities in life. I like Jack. I like Josh. Um, I like Josh in this in this show that we just did because he was calm and together and eloquent. Jack's confident and provocative. Mm. Sam Jones is in the back, like some demented Henry Kissinger gone wrong, <laughs> mixing it up and seeing how much trouble he can cause. <laughs> yeah. But I think it's the a ladle good, man, they call yeah, it. Yeah, I think it's right. I think it's a great, great fight. Mm. And I'm really looking forward to it. I think it's it's one of the fights that we in Britain do so well. Mm. You know, these domestic dust ups that are called about by public demand and by antagonism between fighters. It'll be fascinating to see how they both are in the fight week. And we'll see if people start getting mm. twitchy and more aggressive. If one calms down, one gets more aggressive. We'll see the weigh-in on the Friday before the fight. Yeah. We'll see what it's like then. But I remember set, stepping up to Manchester to watch the Khan versus Brook weigh-in. And on the, all the way down, I'm thinking Khan's got the ability to do it. Yeah. See him on the scale, see Kel Brook, and think, oh, Christ, I've picked the wrong horse. Mm. I don't think we'll see that as, 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 as the case in this instance. But what I'm looking forward to is a really good fight. And it'll be fascinating to see who wins. Listen, I, I, what, you know, being with them two today and, and I like their them mannerisms, both. I like, I like them, both. them both as well. Yeah. And I think that one thing we can guarantee, Simon, is we've got a fascinating fight there. And guys, listen, don't forget, talk boxing with myself and Mr. Jordan. You can come. It comes out every Tuesday morning. Make sure you tune into that talk boxing. But for now, Simon, it's been fascinating. Well done, mate.